Hey, this is Brian from DisableMyCable.com and today I wanted to give you an update on my Verizon 5G home internet service after six months. First of all, let's talk about reliability. I had my first interruption of internet service just a few days ago. I noticed that my internet uh, connection was slow and then I completely lost internet for about five minutes in the middle of the day. Uh, the LED went through a variety of modes, including the blinking red mode, uh, and eventually I just decided to reboot my router. Uh, five minutes after that, the internet connection was restored and was solid after that. I have no idea what happened or why I had that outage, uh, but since that was just the first time I've ever had an outage with my Verizon 5G home internet, I'm still pretty satisfied with the service. Uh, I consider one 10-minute interruption of internet service in six months to be pretty good. Now your mileage might vary. Some people have had rock solid service like me, while other people will complain that it goes down like every day. Uh, it just depends on your location relative to the Verizon towers in your area. Now I actually have a video explaining how to find the 5G towers in your area for Verizon or any other uh, provider. I'll leave a link in the description for that. Now let's talk about speed. My typical download speed still ranges from about 180 to 220 megabits per second, sometimes lower and sometimes higher. Uh, but something interesting happened after the outage I just described. I did a speed test and recorded my fastest ever download speed of 330 megabits per second after that outage. And that was the first time I'd ever recorded a speed faster than 300 megabits per second. Uh, I've since recorded a maximum speed of 340 megabits per second. Now, I don't know if that speed increase was related to the downtime, or maybe Verizon was upgrading something, or maybe because it was just I recently swapped my uh, Ethernet cables. But it, it was definitely higher than I had ever uh, seen before. But that was just kind of like a more of a peak high value, most of the time I still get between 180 and 220 megabits per second. Now, one more thing I'm, I'm doing differently now after a few months is that I'm using pass-through mode with my uh, gateway. I use an external Wi-Fi router with my Verizon gateway in order to get better Wi-Fi coverage in my home. To do that, I, orig I originally just turned off Wi-Fi on the gateway and plugged in my router and just used it that way. But with that set up, I wasn't able to view my Tableau DVR recordings when I was away from home like I was able to do when I had cable internet. The fix for that is to put the Verizon gateway in IP pass-through mode. That solves what's called the double NAT problem when plugging one router into another. Now, the reason I didn't do that originally was that I had read online that people were having problems with pass-through mode uh, on the gateway. But it turns out that the problems were fixed in a firmware update, and now pass-through mode is solid on the Verizon gateway. I've been using it for months, and uh, I've had no problems with pass-through mode. I can now view my Tableau DVR recordings from away, uh, when I'm away from home. Pass-through mode can also fix problems with like gaming or if you're using a VPN or other issues. So if you have any problems like that, put your uh, gateway and pass-through mode. I'll put a link in the description showing you how to do that. Now, as far as billing is concerned, uh, my monthly bill is still $50 a month, uh, reflecting the $10 discount for having auto pay. I've had no problems with uh, billing and no hidden taxes or fees have come up. Some people have asked why the cost isn't $25 like they've seen advertised um, a lot. That price is only available if you have certain Verizon wireless uh, plans for your cell phone, which I don't. So that's why my bill isn't 25, because I use Mint Mobile for my cell phone. Okay, let's talk about the uh, Verizon website and app. So if you've uh, watched any of my previous videos, you might have heard me uh, rant about how bad the Verizon website is and how terrible the sign-up process it was for me, you can actually find some pretty hilarious posts on Reddit and Facebook 
where people talk about how bad the Verizon website is. Now, I recently logged back into the Verizon website to see if it changed at all, and I actually found some improvements in it. I was able to update my personal information without having to call customer support. I was able to add and remove uh, items from my shopping cart in the store. And I was able to log into the app and use it to view my account. None of these things was working before. So there are signs of improvement here. But is the account signup process fixed? That I can't say for sure. I know from other posts that it was still pretty broken as of two months ago. I'm just hoping that the account signup process has improved since then. Uh, let me know in the comments if, if you had any problems signing up and if it was fixed for you or if you still had problems. So that's been my experience with Verizon 5G home internet after six months. Overall, I'm still uh, very satisfied with the service and I'm saving $30 a month compared with what I was paying for cable. Now, although cable does offer higher speeds in my area of over 400 megabits per second, the cable wiring in my building is so poor that I can only get less than 100 megabits per second with cable. So for me, Verizon 5G is a no-brainer. It's faster, cheaper, and just as reliable as cable for me. Again, your results may vary. If you're interested in Verizon 5G home internet, Ask a friend who has Verizon for their cell phone to come over to your home and see how strong the 5G signal is there by looking at how many bars they're getting on their phone. That will give you an idea of your potential signal strength with Verizon 5G home internet. I hope this video was helpful for you. Please like and subscribe if it was. And check out my blog, disablemycable.com, with more tips on saving money on internet access. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below and I will try to answer them. Thanks a lot.